right, what we have here is the Fuji XP80. It's a waterproof, shockproof camera. It says right here it can go down to 15 meters underwater. So I guess you can go diving with it. I'm mainly using it for surfing and stand-up footage, stuff around the water, maybe around the pool. And this thing is super cheap, $139. What you do is you push the button here and you twist this piece off and then the side door opens up where we have a SD card, HDMI uh, output, as well as USB for charging and connecting to the computer. The battery's right here, it's pretty small. I haven't tested the um, actual capacity yet, but so far so good. Basically you close it up, lock it, and it's good to go. I added this floating strap just to make sure that if it drop it, it doesn't sink to the bottom of the ocean. Now the controls are pretty simple. There's no cover over here, so you basically need to just lick it if it gets wet and then rinse it off or wipe it on your shirt if it's not wet. On and off right here. So this will not, if you push the record button without it being on, nothing happens. So you turn it on. Ensure this is, this. Um, it says, ensure the battery chamber cover is locked. So I've already ensured that. And you push back. And it has a whole bunch of features now. Has the macro mode, has the flash, don't really need that in the water. It has this button right here for burst. So I can push that and then, watch. It shoots a whole bunch of pictures. But mainly I'm using this thing, actually turn, take the burst off, for video. So I'm gonna shoot video. And as you can see, it's shooting video. It can shoot up to 1080 at 60 frames per second. So far that's pretty good. I haven't had any any um, issues with the video and and you'll get a chance to see what it looks like. But all in all, I think this camera's pretty good. It's 130 something dollars. It's cheap at Costco and so far it's working totally fine. Here are the pros of the XP80. First off, video quality is good. It's high definition. 1080 at 60 frames per second. That means we can make really nice slow motion and it's fairly clear. Image quality is really good at 16 megapixel for the images. Actually, I was surprised at how well the photos came out. I touched them up a little bit in Lightroom, but for the most part, they come out of the camera pretty nicely. Of course, it was in the morning and the sun was out, so there was pretty nice lighting in general. The burst mode works pretty well. It shoots, I believe, 10 frames per second or so. I didn't have any issue with it. Actually, I didn't really use it. This camera is tough. It's waterproof. I don't have to worry about dropping it. There's no moving parts in front of the lens, like the lens cover. I think the best thing about this camera is the zoom. The zoom works really well, and it allows you to film somebody else somewhere else and get them actually in a viewable position because when you're using the super wide angles of other cameras like GoPros, those are really great when you're close up to your subject, but when you're kind of far away, it becomes hard and you have to crop a lot later on in post-production. The zoom on this is pretty good as well as the optical stabilization. Now it's not as good as the Sony camera that I have, but it is pretty good. And I did do a little bit more stabilization in Final Cut Pro, but for the most part, it's not bad. Now here's the cons. The play button's in a really weird place. I don't like the play button being on the down button. It doesn't make sense. It's like you push the, the play button and then you wanna play it, you should push the middle button. That's how it is on almost all the other cameras. I don't know why on this one, it's on the down button. It completely throws me off. The menu system, I do not like, but it's new to me and maybe people who are familiar with it might like it. It's also really clunky in the water. Now, I had a wrist strap, but I didn't really know where to put the actual camera when I wasn't using it. I could put it in my pocket, but then in order to take it out and then hold my paddle and so on, it, it was kind of hard. I saw Todd Bradley who had it in his vest, but I wasn't wearing a vest. I guess that's another option for it. And this thing needs a floaty to make sure that it floats. If I can find a better way to make it less cumbersome, then 
I really like this camera for shooting other people. It's not as easy and convenient as the GoPro is, especially when using the mini Huni mount on my head and not needing my hands. But for $139, it shoots great video and great photos. This is a perfect camera to give to your kids as well because for the most part, they probably will not destroy it. And when you buy it from Costco, you get a full 90 days to try it out. So it's a no-lose situation. Thanks so much for watching StandUpThePaddleSurf.net. Thanks if you've been watching for a long time. We've been doing this since 2007. Please give us a thumbs up. Please give us a like. Share this with your friends. And subscribe to our channel. We will see you next time. Aloha.